fish there, no, Danny? Okay. Morning, everyone. Do you need a sound check or are you okay? I might go this way. Yep. Okay, All good to go. Excellent. Wonderful to be here today uh, with Joe Kelly, who's my parliamentary colleague and friend, the member for Green Slopes, and Damien Madden, who's the Vice President of Northern Creek Catchment Coordinating Committee, who's been doing some phenomenal work here. Uh, they have previously received a Community Sustainability Action Grant of up to $50,000 uh, to do weeding and revegetation work at, in a 350 metre area uh, in the Bridgewater Creek area. They've engaged, I'm told, 280 volunteers planted 4,300 trees, uh, over 30,000 ground cover plants and removed 1,800 kilograms of waste. So they've done an incredible job here. They are one of 538 projects that have received up to $21 million of funding through these grants. And today I'm very pleased to announce the next round of our Community Sustainability Action Grants. This next round is for community spaces. We want Queensland to become the community garden capital of the country. We want to use those underutilised and unused areas and make them better for our local community and for our natural environment. So today we're announcing grants of up to $50,000 for for eligible groups uh, to be able to build or expand community gardens to purchase composting and recycling infrastructure as well as doing native revegetation work we of course know how important that is for our environment but it's also really important for community isolation for uh, mental and physical health and also for food security where we are able to uh, grow fresh produce for the community so we encourage everyone out there to apply online uh, those applications are open today. I want to thank all of the community groups who already do incredible work. I have the Narang Community Gardens in my electorate who, who already do incredible work, not only making sure that we have a beautiful environment, but pro uh, producing wonderful uh, fruit and vegetables for our wider community. Uh, this grant provides those organisations with that extra bit of money to either expand or even build on new concepts and ideas. I might hand over to Joe now, then go over to uh, Damien to talk about his project and then do questions. Thanks, Minister. This is a really exciting announcement today. I first met uh, Damien around 1998, and like he did with a lot of people, he recruited me into Norman Creek Catchment Coordinating Committee, uh, N4C. And, and through that time, I've seen right across the catchment the great work that Damien and all of the volunteers at N4C have done. Not just uh, restoring our environment and, 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 and taking action that's good for the climate, but actually building community and connecting people up and connecting people together to work on something that they're really passionate about and they really care about. So these grants will enable that work. It'll be good for our community, it'll be good for the environment, it'll be good for climate. It's a really exciting day. Well, yes, well, is that I, I, my name's Damien Madden. I'm, I'm, I'm the, uh, I've been heavily involved in, in this sort of project work, particularly for this site. We, I've been here for over 50 years. What you see here, I can show you, there was nothing here. Uh, about the 1980s, but uh, uh, I'd like to actually thank the, the Department of Environment and Science, DES, for what they've done and the grant that they've given us to be able to extend one of my passions of, of the N4C is, is repairing of our waterways, clearing it up, and we've been involved in this um, basically uh, since the N4C was formed. And uh, this is this is an area that's particular because I've lived here for over 50 years for this particular site, and uh, the grant money was further up there where where I've put in a, a lowland rainforest, cleared up a lot of rubbish and all that. I'd like to show you later after this talk's finished. But uh, the N4C also, uh, as I said, we're very thankful for the grant money that's been provided for us, and also community farms. All those are in the Norman Creek catchment particularly this area we're part of what the future Olympics will be and of course we as a group would like to be involved with the department in getting the best interest going for the community as well as for the world and of course uh, what you see here is what a group like us working with the department and council can achieve um, uh, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Any questions for Damien before I take questions? How, I guess, important is it for these types of grants for the community as a whole? Well, well, it wouldn't get done. What uh, I can show you photos of no, no vegetation at all. It's it's the community involved with the, with with the department and council that actually achieve what uh, all the all the quite significant areas around, particularly our waterways, and that's where I'm coming from. 
where the N4C is coming from. Uh, they were once very degraded. We're in an urbanised area. This is a, an Ormond Creek catchment. It's got over 100,000 people in that area, 30 square kilometres. And of course, going back to the 1980s, there, there was no official policy. It was, it was degraded and, and, and there was this unofficial um, uh, thought, maybe, uh, uh, from powers to be, that the whole area is degraded and there's nothing much we can do about it. We've actually changed that and it's getting better. And of course, as I said before, I can't stress highly, uh, highly enough, the N4C want to also to be involved with the, with the state government, the department, and we've got we've got the very the grant money and all that uh, that type of grant money. Uh, we've got groups that can really take advantage of it within this area, and of course uh, that from community farms to what I've been doing along our waterways, rehabilitating it, putting a lowland rainforest eventually. And um, what more can I say? Finished? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I can ramble on a bit. No, no, I was no, no, it's all good. <laughs> now I'm going to take some other questions yes, probably, yes. so thanks David. Any other questions? Yeah, Minister, just on youth crime, there's yep. a report in the Victoria Mail today about a 15 year old boy, um, you know, charged with 80 offences but not being, not one convicted reported. What's your response to that? Obviously, uh, in relation to individual cases, I you know, need to be very careful with any comments that I make. What I will say, though, is I absolutely appreciate that the community wants justice. That is why, in December, the Premier announced a whole range of reforms. Uh, those include legislative reform, but a whole range of other measures, including trials of engine immobilisers, a fast-tracking sentencing team, uh, measures that will make a real and meaningful impact to make sure uh, that perpetrators are held to account. Now, uh, one thing that I should also say is that, of course, we know that the majority of the time uh, when young people who have offended come into contact with authorities, 80% uh, of them never re-offend again. But those who do re-offend should see the consequence. That is what these new reforms are targeted at. And as I said, uh, a number of them are already being rolled out right now. Can you explain, can you explain how lifting the maximum penalty is actually going to see people uh, in juveniles locked up for longer? Uh, I think you know one of these measures alone won't solve the problem. We need multiple measures and that's why we announced a whole suite of reforms. Uh, that also includes obviously changes to the length of sentencing uh, but also changes to make sure that the courts are considering when an offender has uh, breached their bail, their previous criminal history uh, and their criminal behaviour in that sentencing. So uh, there's a whole range of reforms that are going to be implemented, some of which have already be, been implemented to make sure uh, the juveniles who have committed repeat offence offences uh, are absolutely uh, punished for those offences and ideally rehabilitated as well. Why not, why not lift the minimum? Why not, why not lift the minimum um, sentence? Yeah. Uh, well, look, there's a whole range of reasons why we've put out the reforms that we have based on consultation and feedback with first responders, with legal groups, with other community organisations. Uh, we need to make sure that whatever we implement uh, is evidence-based and works. Uh, ultimately, the decision of sentencing is one for the courts, uh, but the community rightfully wants to see people uh, see the consequences of their actions. And so we've made sure that we can make that crystal clear in legislation and also make sure that we're giving the frontline services the tools that they need to be able to ensure that these uh, offenders are reprimanded. But do, do magistrates and, and the courts actually have the power to be able to punish these people? It's, you know, the, the Liberals have been arguing that the laws aren't tough enough, that the magistrates are just going off what's there and it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, ultimately, de decisions of, of those for the courts, obviously, in relation to sentencing. Legislators, our, our role is to implement laws that can then be uh, followed in court proceedings. Now, you know, I see the Leader of the Opposition get up every day in press conferences, but he has no policy. The last two years, David Christopher has not put in place one private member's bill. Uh, and the only solution that he is proposing is an idea that was under Campbell Newman that actually saw only 10% of bail applications refused and of that 10%, 90% of those offenders went on to, went on to re-offend uh, within the first year. So we need to look at evidence, we need to look at policies that will deliver uh, the sort of solutions the community needs. Um, Detention is a last resort. Um, it's written into the youth justice legislation that that should be avoided and restorative options should be taken. So obviously yep. magistrates are looking at that, they're taking that into consideration, particularly for people who are of a really young age, we're talking the 14, 15 year olds. Yep. 
So what more can be asked of them? Are they just not being tough enough? Uh, look, you know, obviously our magistrates take into, uh, take into account a whole range of factors. And as I said, 80% of young people who come into contact uh, with authorities don't go on to re-offend. So we do need to be cognisant of that. Uh, for those individuals who are repeat offending, we need to make sure that there are tough enough penalties in place and that authorities are having the time they need to actually ensure those rehabilitation programs are rolling out effectively. Uh, what we have said is we want to make it absolutely crystal clear uh, to those who are opposed Using the law, uh, that uh, that uh, breaches of uh, bail conditions and that uh, that uh, uh, that criminal offences and someone's prior history is considered in the sentencing. Because I I think the general public, the community, think that if someone uh, has uh, been a repeat offender, that should be considered by the court when they are putting in place sentencing. Do you think the courts need to do a better job? That's what the premier. Uh, look, I think you know. Ultimately, uh, the courts, uh, uh, you know, the courts uh, do their best. Uh, we, uh, we as legislators, are trying to make sure we are being good representatives of the community and making it crystal clear uh, to uh, those who are making the decisions that the community uh, expects uh, expects there to be consequences for juvenile offenders when they are repeat offending. Uh, we, you know, obviously, uh, as I said, we need to also be mindful of those 80% of other young people who. Uh, do uh, early intervention programs are working in the majority of instances, but for some of those repeat offenders, we need to do more. We've acknowledged that, and that's why we've announced a whole suite of reforms. Why, why not remove that measure, that principle that says um, detention should be a last resort for juveniles? Oh, well, I think, as I said, you've got 80% of young people who come uh, to the criminal justice system and never re-offend again, so you need to be really cognisant of that. Uh, but, you know, rightfully, if someone has uh, has committed an offence multiple times, that should be considered in the sentencing, and that's what we'll be doing. And Uh, look, you know, the opposition leader, as I said, has been out in the media for the last two years, uh, uh, not actually implementing any policy suggestions other than, as I said, a, a reform that didn't work. Um, we'll always take on board any good suggestions from anyone in the community. Um, but, you know, when it comes to some of the measures that we've announced, and, and I'll list a couple of them off. When it comes to the announcement we made in uh, December, the extreme high-vis police patrols are already underway and funded. Uh, the nearly $10 million for fast-tracking sentencing program is funded and the Department of Justice and Attorney General are working through that recruitment process right now. Uh, the engine and mobiliser trial for 20,000 vehicles uh, is funded and State Development and Qrider are working through that program redesign right now. Uh, and we've already appointed, uh, of course, the Youth Justice uh, the Youth Crime Task Force Commander. So there's a whole range of measures that are already being implemented. Uh, in terms of the legislative reforms, we are doing consultation right now and we intend to introduce those reforms as soon as possible. How do how those engine immobilisers actually work? Um, That's Sorry. Yeah, can you explain how that program works? Yeah, so that's the detail that Q Rider and uh, State Development are working on. How we'll make sure uh, that those uh, that those are trialled effectively in 20,000 vehicles. We obviously know that there's other jurisdictions that have looked at these engine immobilisers. We want to look at that and make sure that we roll it out effectively. So, Jack, I'm sure we'll be able to provide you with information as soon as we have more about that program design. A parliamentary committee that's made up of the majority of government MPs actually recommended against introducing engine immobilisers. Why? Why does the government think they're now a good idea? Oh, we need to continue to adapt and look at new measures uh, and trial, uh, trial some of these new measures to see if they are effective. You know, this is a really complex problem. Uh, I don't think anyone has one single solution that will resolve this issue. That is why we continue to implement reform. That is why we have announced new reforms in December, so that we can see how we can address this complex issue. And as I said, you know, when you look at the statistics, the amount of juvenile offenders has reduced. So clearly the early intervention programs we're putting in place are working in some instances, but the instances where it's not working, we need to look at new measures and that's what we're doing. So will the government consider recalling Parliament early? deal with these issues? Well, as I said, we're already doing consultation right now. There's all, there's a process that needs to be undertaken before you can introduce uh, legislation. I think Queenslanders understand that and appreciate that. But as I said, there's a whole range of measures already being implemented right now. Those youth justice measures the Premier announced, I think, early in the year. Were you consulted? Was Cabinet consulted before she made that announcement? Jack, as I'm sure you can appreciate, I can't divulge uh, what Cabinet discussions have taken place. But, but we you can say if you were consulted before a decision. Yeah, and look, all colleagues are regularly consulted around 
around um, issues that are impacting our portfolios or our wider community. We've all been talking about how we resolve the complex problem um, of repeat offending, whether that be for ju juveniles or adults. And so, uh, you know, this is a conversation all of our colleagues continue to have. We've put forward suggestions, those are considered. I feel really lucky to be in a cabinet where everyone is uh, genuinely incredibly cooperative, where we talk about what solutions might be able to be implemented. We're trying new things and see what the evidence says. Yeah, we're obviously keeping a close eye on the weather in North Queensland. Uh, the acting premier was briefed by emergency services yesterday. Uh, the local disaster management uh, committees are working closely with emergency services and the Weather Bureau. Uh, obviously, to anyone who's living in far North Queensland, we encourage you to keep uh, keep listening to authorities for any changes that might occur. Uh, and remember, if it's flooded, forget it. Right, thank you. Excellent. Anything else? Thank you. All good. Thank you.